Our scripture today that Pastor John will bring to us in a little bit comes from the book of Hebrews. Can you guys say Hebrews? And there's two things that jump out at me in this text of Hebrews. If you know me and you can hear my voice, will you put your eyes on me, friends? Thank you. Hi. Oh, I see a shaking head. I won't take it personally. It says to come to God with a happy heart. Come to God with a sincere heart. And when you come, consider how you can be an inventor. Now, in my house, I have a child who wants to be an inventor, right? And I have a child who wants to be an engineer. Neither of them want to get married, and they will adopt a child, but it will be a male child, and they will get them when they are 10. <laughs> High dreams in our family. Come to God with a happy heart, and when you come, get inventive. I'm going to share a story with you. It's about a couple named Bob and Mary. Maybe you know this couple. Bob and Mary lived on a quiet road in a busy town in a nice neighborhood. Now there were lots of different types of people who lived on their street, and they made it their personal mission to know all their neighbors as best they could. It's not Bruce, by the way, but I know Bruce does this. Really, Mary just wanted to share her baking with as many people as possible, and she loved it when she heard people rave about her apple pie and her pumpkin bars. I think she was a little proud when it came to her baking skills. Well, Bob and Mary went to church every week, and they were pretty quiet, though, when they were out meeting their neighbors about their personal faith to others. They didn't want to seem preachy. But they tried to do good with everyone, love intentionally, and help however they could. Well, a new family moved onto the street, and for a long while, the house was always closed up and dark. They couldn't figure out who lived there. Many left. Mary left some of her famous pumpkin bars in a sealed container next to the front door and then just watched to see if anybody would take them. She watched and watched and watched, but nobody took them. Hmm, maybe nobody does live in that house. Well, one day, the box was gone. Someone ate her bars. Finally, summer arrived and Bob was out gardening. He noticed a new boy walking around the neighborhood, always with his head down, not saying much, kicking rocks and seeming lonely. Bob would try to make small talk with him when he could, and before long, a friendship formed between Bob and the boy. The boy lived in the house that always seemed closed up, and he had just moved in with his grandma who bought the house. Pretty much all summer long, the boy and Bob and Mary spent a lot of time together. The boy didn't have much else to do. He wanted friendship, and Bob and Mary had it to offer. Well, the fall rolled by, rolled in, and Bob and Mary heard about some bonfires happening in their church for the youth group. One was near and one was far. Bob and Mary talked about it, and they decided that they would try to invite the boy to the bonfire. One day, when the two were out talking, Bob got the courage to ask, hey, you know, the church we go to, they're having a bonfire for kids your age. Would you want to go? The boy looked up with kind of a sparkle in his eye, and he said, really? With other kids, you want to introduce me to them? Well, I would have to ask my grandma, and she probably doesn't care. She doesn't really mind where I go but I don't think I can go because I don't have a ride. Well, Bob replied, I could take you and I can bring you home. Really? But are you gonna go? Well, no, it's for the youth and I have a class that night, so I can't go, but there's other leaders there. Well, um, I, I don't know, I, I just don't know if I could do that. Bob sort of wavered a bit, not knowing what to say or do, and then he felt in his heart that he should go with the boy for the first time, so he wouldn't be nervous. He says to the boy, you know, I'd be happy to bring you and stay with you as you make new friends. I have something else that night for adults, but I'll skip it for you. The boy looked up, and with a tangible eagerness, he said, really, you would do that for me? And the man says, yes, if it helps you be more comfortable and make friends and come to our community, yes, of course. 
Well, Bob did end up bringing the boy to the first bonfire. And later, Bob and Mary hosted many bonfires for the youth group. That verse I talked about in Hebrews that talks about coming with a happy heart, being ready to invent, eager to think of things, eager to consider whatever it takes to be together. Maybe you have a friend who only likes to ride bikes, but you just want to play Legos. Would you be willing to ride bikes for a whole afternoon? Maybe you have someone who is kind of grouchy. Would you be willing to cross the street and extend some grace to them? Friends, let's encourage one another. Invite one another together because it's so important. With happy hearts, let's consider how we can be inventive for Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for being inside our hearts with your Holy Spirit. God, would you help me have a happy heart? God, would you help me think of creative ways that I can help invite people, friends, neighbors, older people, younger people, strangers, anyone, to come and know your love. Amen.